Hi, my name is Andy Militar, and I am the Community Manager for A2Hosting.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at how you can secure your WordPress installation with a few simple techniques. For the first part of this tutorial, we're going to assume that you haven't installed WordPress yet. We're going to look at two different ways of installing WordPress and how you can set these different configuration options in those installers. So first we're going to look at a manual installation of WordPress. So if you've downloaded the WordPress package and you've uh, run the installer that's included with WordPress, uh, this is what one of the first screens is going to look like and it's going to ask you for your database credentials. So one of the first things that we can do is be sure that our username and password that we use for our database are secure. Uh, this isn't something you're ever really going to have to remember so you can make it as complex as you want. Uh, and this is just one of those ways that you can make it harder for people to hack into your website using uh, a database login that they were able to guess. So go ahead and create this using whatever tool you're using. So if you're using cPanel, there's a tool in there that you can create your login and password for your database. Uh, and make sure that they are complex and enter those in here. Uh, another thing that you can do is change the table prefix. So with all of the WordPress tables, uh, the table prefix is, is prepended to the names of the tables. And you can change this to really anything that you want. And one of the things that this does is there's a lot of automated bots that go out and try and hack into WordPress installations. And they assume that you're going to use the default table prefix. So by changing this, some of those routines that those bots use to try and hack into your site um, will be thwarted because you're not going to be using the default option. Uh, so you can really name this anything that you want. You can make it as complex as you want. I like to leave the underbar there just to separate the prefix out from the name. So you can just really just hit a bunch of keys in your keyboard if you want. Um, make it something unique that people aren't going to be able to guess. Now, uh, if you're using the Sautaculous installer, you can still make those changes. Uh, so if we look at the Sautaculous install, under database settings, there's a table prefix option that works the exact same way. Now, the other thing that you can do is a lot of people will also use the default admin login when they set up WordPress. So after you've entered your database information and you've started the installer, uh, the default WordPress installer will take you to this screen where you enter your site title and you enter in the username that you would like to use. Uh, so here, go ahead and change this to something other than admin because again, that's something that's very expected. A lot of the bots will try and just password uh, brute force attempt to, to log in with um, passwords against the admin account. So if you even just change it to your name admin or you know something else that you would know, uh, that's not the default, it's not easily guessable, and it's a little bit harder for people to get in. Uh, and then again, you'll want to be sure that you use a secure password here. Both with the WordPress installer and also if we go back to the Softaculous installer, um, there are strength indicators. So you can see um, your password go from weak to strong. You want to be sure that you do use a strong password and that's not something that you're using on every other website that you log into. Um, we don't want it to be guessable. We want it to be hard for people to, to, to get in using that password. If we go back over to the Softaculous installation, if you're installing with Softaculous, if you scroll down, uh, you'll be able to enter that information under the admin account. So again, you know, I change this to Andy Admin. If we type a longer password here, we'll see it turn into a strong password. Um, so we want to be sure that we do that to make sure that our site is secure. Now, once you've installed WordPress, um, there are a few other things that you can do in order to be sure that your site stays secure. Uh, so if I go over to my demo site here, uh, what we'll see right away is that my installation of WordPress is a little out of date. So we can see up here at the top, there's a little yellow bar that comes down and it says WordPress 3.7.1 is available, please update now. You click that link that says please update now, WordPress will take you to an update screen and there'll be a big blue button right there that says update now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click on that and then WordPress is going to download the update, it's going to unpack it, it's going to install it, and then it's going to take us back to a screen that lets us know that it's complete. So here we can see now, welcome to WordPress 3.71. Uh, so our WordPress is up to date and that yellow bar is no longer there hounding us to do an update. We do however have a couple other updates. You can see this little uh, circles with the number 2 next to it, that means that I have two updates. And if you go to the dashboard, um, you'll also see on the left there, uh, it lets us know that we have a couple of updates here. So if we click that link that says updates, it's going to take us actually back to that same screen where we updated our WordPress. 
But if we look down here, we can see which plugins and themes that need updated in our installation. So we can see in this case, uh, two of our themes, our 2013 and 2012 themes, both have updates that we need to install. So if I just click that select all, it's going to select all of those themes and click the update themes button. It'll do the exact same thing it did when it updated WordPress. It'll go out and download all the updates. It will install them. And then when it's done, it'll tell us that all updates have been completed. And then we can uh, return, return back to the themes page or the update page, or we can just go up here and click back to our dashboard. And when we do that, we see that that update is no longer there. So we know that everything is up to date and good to go. The next thing that we'll do is we're going to go back to our plugins page and take a peek around. Uh, one of the things that I know that I do that's not the best thing to do is that when I'm building a website for somebody, I will probably install a few different plugins to you know either try different themes out or try uh, maybe a couple of different social um, sharing plugins to see which one I like best for the theme that I'm using. And I don't always remember to go back and delete those extra extensions and plugins that I've installed. Um, and that can be a potential security vulnerability because you have code uh, in your site that you're not using and you don't want to do that. You want to be sure that you have as little code that is exposed and, and potentially vulnerable as possible. So what you want to do is just go into your plugins and do a quick audit and see if there's anything in here that you're not using that you can go ahead and delete. Uh, so in this example, this Hello Dolly extension, that's actually something that um, is installed with WordPress by default. It's kind of a, just in a little example plugin. I'm not using it. I haven't activated it. I don't need it. So um, I don't have to deactivate it because it was never activated, but I can just click that delete button and it's going to ask me if I really do want to delete this. And of course, as usual, be, be careful. Um, if you've installed a plugin and you've created tables with it or added data to your WordPress install, then if you delete this, you are deleting that data. So be sure that it is something that you want to delete, that you've backed everything up accordingly. Um, but in this case, I've never even used this plugin, so I'm going to go ahead and click the yes, delete these files, and it's going to, going to delete that plugin from my install. So no longer is installed, no longer a potential security vulnerability. The other thing we're going to do is go back and audit our users. Um, you know, on um, sites that have been around for a while, you may have added a friend or somebody to come in and help you install um, something or write content for you. Um, your original web developer might be in here. Um, so what you want to do is just go through and look at uh, who is in your users list. And if there's anybody that shouldn't be there, delete them or disable their account. Um, and it's not a bad idea to go in and change passwords every now and then too. Uh, that's just uh, more things that you can do to help secure your installation. Uh, the last thing that we're going to briefly talk about is if you had already installed WordPress but you did not change your table prefix, for example, or you're using your you're using your admin login as the default and you want to use something else. Um, it's a little bit harder to do some of those things once WordPress is installed, but there are some plugins that can help. Uh, one, for example, is Better WP Security or Better WordPress Security. Um, there's a few other ones out there. Uh, WordPress Total Security is one, also WordFence is another. Um, they will help you do some of those tasks. So they'll help you rename your table, table prefix or help you rename your admin account to something else. Um, we're not going to go into the nuts and bolts of how all those work in this tutorial. We'll create another tutorial that walks you through one of those examples. Um, but you might want to utilize one of those tools to help you go through and change some of these things that you didn't when you originally installed WordPress. The other benefit of those tools like uh, Better WP Security or WordFence is they also add a bit of proactive protection to your WordPress site. So they will uh, attempt to identify traffic that's coming to your site that is known to be uh, malicious or you know uh, it will also log in keep track of things that um, just seem a little bit out of the ordinary and attempt to block some of that traffic from your site. Uh, so they can be really powerful tools especially if you have a larger blog that's getting a lot of traffic um, you might be getting a lot more spam traffic than you know uh, and these tools can help you kind of filter some of that out. So we definitely recommend that you add these to your WordPress installation um, to help just secure things a little bit tighter. So that concludes this tutorial. If you would like to view our other tutorials, you can see them on our YouTube page, or you can also go to a2hosting.com kb.